let's just get into our lesson. All right. As always, all praise and glory to Jah, our Father, and His Son, Jehoshua, the Messiah, our Savior, also known as Yehoshua, Yahweh Shai, Yehusha, Yahshua, Yeshaya, Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, Hamashiach, the Christ. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy is your name, Jah. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us out of temptations, and deliver and rescue us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and all the glory forever. In the name and the authority of your Son, Jehoshua, the Messiah, our Savior, we pray. So, so be it. Praise John. <clears throat> Today's date is let me just clear my uh thing up here today's date is the second day of judah the fourth month for the jubilee year 6224 from creation this is the first sabbath of the true summer season also equivalent to may 11th 2024 summer is here scripturally and winter is over praise jah yes praise jah what you see here on your screen is the, uh, I guess we'd call it the star spangled kind of banner, so to speak, uh, of Zion with our seven pointed stars. On the outside is the 28 year cycle that we that you know that we utilize when we're dealing with um, keeping everything in line with creation and just perfection of seasons. Inside it, we have 12 circles represent the 12 months. Within the 12, we have seven stars i said circle seven stars seven stars as well as the middle star and all of the stars as you know are seven pointed looking at our 28 year cycle we're in calendar eight which is a jubilee year the 50th year and it's also a gregorian leap year as we look at the first month of summer judah now, one of the reasons why we call this month Judah is because there's no name for um, this month Judah. Um, unless I think, it, is it the fourth month or the fifth month, which is Tammuz? And we know Tammuz is a pagan god, right? Yes, that's correct. So we'll, as we look at this um, almanac here, we are on the second day. This is a scriptural summer of what we're going to be talking about today. The six-month dry, hot summer season begins. We have three months of summer and three months of autumn. Again, Judah is the fourth sun, so the fourth month has no name. So summer goes from Judah until Kislu, October, which is six months. Now, this is a relation of Jazz Almanac, and I want to say a couple of things before we move on, Brother Dean. You can mm -hmm. chime in. You know, with our ministry, one of the greatest things and greatest revelations is the Most High's true scriptural calendar. And we definitely understand that there are many other calendars in the world and people who follow other calendars and there's great calendar confusion, no doubt. But with our ministry, we aim to clean up all of these confusions. We expose any lunar cycle calendars, any equinox calendars, the Enoch calendar, the Maserat calendar. I mean, the list goes on and on. But the true scriptural calendar is not governed by lunar months at all. There is a 364 day common year. We also utilize sabbatical years. All years only have 12 months and the days and dates never move from the fixed day of the week. So all the fe festivals that are set on Jazz Almanac will always occur on the same day of the week and date of that month. It doesn't wander like almost every other calendar does that is out there. And so this is a, a great revelation. This calendar is true. We've had it for, well, I know it's been in, in use by David Ray for, I would say, almost 40 years. So us picking up on the slack, I've known this almanac for over 30 years. I've studied it, learned, added to it, grown in it, compared, rechecked, reexamined. And there's no other calendar in the world that can compare to Jah's scriptural almanac. It's according to scriptures. And even though people say that we use, you know, the name Jah instead of Yah, although we do recognize Yah as well, 
people feel that you know we're not up to par in knowledge and understanding but mm -hmm. that's far from the truth and as a matter of fact you know we're always supposed to test the spirits you don't just go by hearing one word or especially when it comes to names because as you know there's a controversy about names but this calendar that you are going to hear about and on our channel and that we profess greatly is the true scriptural calendar with scriptural months the months are governed by the scriptures I hear a lot of people talking about, hey, this is the true calendar from the scriptures. And then they tell you to go to lunar cycles and go to the equinoxes and all these things. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the true calendar from scripture, all the months can be figured out. And we have published these things in books and on this channel as well. And in many other videos that you can compare with the scriptures and understand the cycles of years, months, and the whole calendar in a nutshell. That's right. Want to add anything there, Dean? Um, well, yes. One one of the fundamental truths about Jah's calendar is it started right from the beginning, and we read in Genesis from day one, without the sun, moon, or stars being yet present. And so we have to remember that Jah's calendar is not governed by those lights, um, like how some people might believe that it is. But Jah started it from day one and started counting days right from the beginning without the use of the sun, moon, or stars. And that's, that's right. where the calendar begins. That, that first day that you read about is the first day of the first year, of the first season, of the first of many cycles of time that we read in Genesis. True talks, D, true talks. If there are any questions and comments on this uh, topic here, uh, feel free to put them in. Shout out to Janessa, to Andrea, to Billy. Welcome back, Billy. Sister Carice, Brother John, Auntie Alma, Brother Greg, Mama Greg, and all others tuning in today. One love. As we look at the yearly almanac, here we are, the fourth month, the second day of the week. And when you look at this almanac, notice that the first three months, they have passed. This is called the latter rains, or people would call it spring in the world. And now we are reaching into summer. And summer, early summer is for three months. Then we have latter summer for, for three months, also known as autumn. And combining these two, three months, three plus three is six. So there's six months of summer according to the scriptures and the land of Israel. And then we have the early rain season beginning in November. And we're going to cover all of that information today with Jaws Will if we get through it. So you ready to move, D? Let's move. All right. So understanding one thing is, again, the first set of uh, the first quarter, we'll call it, or the first three months. Remember, that's a quarter of a year or a season is the latter rains. You'll notice also that the equinox is in the middle of the season. It's not the beginning of seasons. That's erroneous, false, and deceptive. Then we have early summer, as I said, latter summer, and the early or former rains, with the equinoxes and solstices all being the middle of the true seasons. And this is actually known to many people, especially those who know calendars, even if it's not in the scriptural area. When we look at the scriptural seasons and mid seasons for the for this jubilee year 6224 from origination or 2024 AD this is just true seasons and the fall seasons combined so we have true spring up top we have mid spring true summer mid summer true autumn mid autumn true winter mid winter so the middles are the equinoxes and solstices as we said right so these are the again the these are the middles right here. As we go around this way. These are all, again, the middle of the seasons, the equinoxes and solstices. A bib or February is the beginning of the year. And then we have when false astronomical spring begins in March. Judah, May 10th, which was yesterday, is the beginning of true summer. False summer begins uh, on the summer solstice which is really midsummer. True autumn begins in Ethanim on August. Then we have the false beginning of autumn 
with the September or the, yeah, you could call it the fall equinox. True winter begins in November, the 10th month, Tibet. And then we have, again, false winter with the winter solstice. So what you see on your screen is a, a complete understanding in a basic sense of the true beginning of seasons and the middle of the seasons or the false beginning of seasons. And as you can see, there's quite a difference. Mm -hmm. Scripture. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So in this understanding here, Satan has greatly deceived the world. I mean, all of us were in this deception, and there's even a lot more deceptions that many of us are in. Some are coming out of it, giving thanks to the Most High for these, you know, for getting our eyes opened. But when it comes to the understanding of the seasons and the calendar, Satan has done a prime work in that area because that, those are the things that are going to keep us in line with the Most High to keep our appointed festivals with him. And so what he put forth is many false calendars, and one is the Babylonian Luni solar calendar, which is commonly called today the Hebrew calendar. Mm -hmm. That's right, this lunar month calendar that people use that, you know, probably most Israelite groups are using in the United States and around the world in Canada and England. They're using this lunar month calendar. Not all, but a great amount. And others would use the, the, the Enoch calendar. But the Hebrew lunar calendar with lunar months, oh man, it is so, so false. It's actually evil. It's designed to worship the devil and to lead people away from it. And I would encourage you, this, this lesson today is not about lunar months, but I would encourage you to definitely check out our channel, get the research, do your own research if you have to. Really look up the words month and moon and get a good understanding. You'll see that there's great deceptions. And I know many sincere you know, Israelite brothers and sisters are out there forwarding that calendar, but they're sincerely deceived. And for the most part, I'll, I'll finish off in saying this, is that usually when people follow this lunar calendar thing, I tend to find that they don't really know much about calendars. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, putting ourselves above people, but people just say, hey, when somebody says the new moon, we're going to follow it. They don't know the numbers of it, why you have to add in a 13-month year. And some don't even know that you have to add in a 13-month year to keep it with the seasons. So we tend to find that. You know, those individuals are, are lacking great understanding in Canada, just kind of going blindly into it. And believe it or not, that's not a good thing. No, no, it's not. But this is what we're here to do. We're here to spread the truth and make people aware that Jah's calendar exists. You can see the evidence of it within scripture. And now is the time to learn about Jah's true times and his feast days. And, you know, most people, as you were saying before, even professed believers pay little attention to calendars, calendar dates, the beginning of months and seasons. But mm -hmm. Josh says otherwise. And these things are very important to know. Some people, if you ask them the date, they they can't even tell you what date it is on the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> so um, yeah. it's very important to know these things. And we pray that Josh can make these things go out into the world. And we thank Brother, our elder David Ray for putting in the work and brother, you and me and Sean and the whole assembly and all those who understand this calendar, it's now is the time to put this calendar out into the world and make our people know the true times of Jah. That's right. And again, if you know of this almanac and you're part of the Zion assembly, forward these things, forward it in a great way. You're going to get a reward from the Most High for doing this work. So don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed of the name Jah when you come amongst other Israelites. And, you know, if anything, you could you still, you could use be, you know, multilingual, so to speak, and say, yeah, the Lord, the God, when you know who you're speaking to. And if you're speaking to certain individuals who have no knowledge of the Most High's name, then you would go accordingly and kind of warm up into it because you don't want to stifle conversation just because of, you know, a difference in name, which I find many people do. That's right. There's a scripture that says, be ready to give an answer of the hope that's within you. So always be prepared to open your mouth and speak the truth with people. You never know. John might send somebody to test you, to test your knowledge. But the point is that you have to be ready and be strong in these things that you know. Even if you know what might be a little, be strong in it so you can show some, someone, somebody else the truth. Yes. All right, let's move on. 
Now, the calendars of today are both astronomical and contrary to Jah's original scriptural almanac. Now, you have to understand this. Whoever controls the calendar controls the people. And this is something I've noticed that when I kind of have conversations with other individuals and they tend to be maybe leaders of groups and they're using the wrong calendar, they're, they're very, you know, I wouldn't say prideful, but they're very, I don't know, it seems fearful because they figure that if, you know, if you're going to be bringing them the true calendar, you know, they're going to have to submit to you or bow down to you or something of that nature. But, you know, when you have the true calendar or any calendar, that does control the people, just like the Gregorian calendar. However, though, I don't think any brothers or sisters out there should be afraid. We're not here to rule it over anyone. You know, we're flesh and blood like everyone else, overcoming temptations, fighting that good fight, correcting and examining, and also helping others, right? Not just trying to worry about our own skin, which is important, but, you know, rescuing others, grabbing them out of the fire. Because, you know, if you do these things and convert one or help to bring one back to the truth, it takes away a multitude of sins. That's true. So when we look at, you know, the three main calendars of the world, lunar, solar, lunisolar, this is what you'll find in, in the monotheistic religions of the world. Monotheistic, of course, means they claim to worship one God, but the one God that everybody's really worshiping is Satan in that way. And not, I mean, I'm not saying it in a puffed up way, but if you're caught up into mainstream Christianity, mainstream well, Islam altogether and um, Judaism, which rejects the, the Messiah, mm. well, you know, those, that's a, just a falsehood right there in that, in that mainstream area. So when it comes to um, lunar month and solar equinox years, that's, again, the professed biblical calendar, a Hebrew calendar that, you know, most people and Christians and Israelite groups forward. Then we have the modern uh, astronomical solar equinox calendar, also dealing with the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar. And we have to use, um, sorry to say though, but we have to use these terms because that's what we know now. And mm -hmm. because the Gregorian calendar wanders a lot, it may seem like it makes the most high calendar move around, but the most high calendar is fixed. It's just that their calendar is moving back and forth throughout the years. That's right. And then of course, the strictly lunar calendar, lunar months, they don't deal with the equinox in terms of Islam or anything. They just do their thing. So Ramadan in, in about 32 years, the, their um, festival called Ramadan would pass through all four seasons within that 32 year period. Mm -hmm. So both calendars, the loony solar calendar, anything dealing with lunar months is the devil's calendar. It's a part of the beastly calendar. And this is also what the Gentiles out there use. And when I say the Gentiles, I'm talking, let's call them the Gentile Jews. This is what they, you know, this is the calendar that they worship. And we do know that they're kind of far away from the worshiping of the true most high. So again, both calendars, lunar calendars and Gregorian solar calendars are Baalim calendars. See, Baalim and Ashtaroth worship is alive and well today. Be careful. Scripture. Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. So times and laws have been changed, obviously, as you know. Many different calendars. Uh, many different laws, even doing away with laws, mm -hmm. excuse me, and the festivals of the Most High. All of these things have been changed by the adversary through the Gentiles. Before that, he was working through black people, the sheep, the Ethiopians. If you know understanding of the word Ethiopia as it pertains to black people, original black people, um, the Ethiops that way. The devil works through them to take people off especially the Israelites, off of worshiping the Most High in truth in terms of the appointed seasons, festivals, and days. That's right. Scripture. Blessed be the name of Jah forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. So I didn't put in the verse here, but I'm pretty sure anyone out there could, could go um, find it out that way. But notice he says he changes the times and seasons. So everything is within the Most High's wisdom, right? And when we speak about the Most High's scriptural calendar, we're going to also be focusing on the land of Israel, Jasherel, the land of Canaan, 
so to speak, that, that was given to Abraham and his descendants. For that land there is in the tropical area and it has a, a climate or a weather that has been a standard ever since creation. That means it doesn't really change. You could have odd weather here and there, but the climate always remains the same for that land. That's right. Jaws calendar is heavily connected to the temperatures, the climate, the agriculture, and the weather of the land of Israel. Yeah, the rainy seasons in particular. That's right. So oh, there's a scripture. I remember I left it in there. Yeah, there's a scripture. You don't okay. have to read the Daniel mm -hmm. 2, 20 through 21. But again, we're focusing on these seasons. Now, before we go any further, I also want to say that in the scriptures, you're not going to really see spring. You, you see the word spring, but as it referring to a, a season, no, or autumn, no, that way. But they are also those spring and autumn are transitional um, seasons. And you see them in the scriptures under harvest, latter rains, and the time of sowing or latter summer as well. But we're going to use autumn and spring or latter rains just for communication's sake. Scripture. Genesis 1.14. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Right. So this is on creation day four of the creation week. That's right. So let's look at what these seasons and days and years are. Genesis 8, verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So when we're looking at these verses here. We can see from Genesis 1, the signs of the seasons. And we can see what these seasons are down low, right? We see seed time, harvest cold summer winter and summer and winter are the main two seasons spoken of in the scriptures and That's those right. two main seasons are six months long each and you can divide them into two as well but day and night all of these things so the most high saying is calendar is not going to cease right everything is going to continually move until Jah wants to end it on his own will that's right Now, one thing you have to see is that we see that they were given for four things, the sun, moon, and stars, signs, seasons, days, and years. And you have the Hebrew equivalents for your research. But you know that there's no mention of weeks, months, or feasts, right? It doesn't say that any of those sun, moon, and stars were for weeks, months, or feasts. And this is because the Most High already was calculating out his week. And during creation week, he was counting days. So everything is based upon a count for the Most High. And the sun, moon, and stars operate within that count or the, the numerics of the Most High Jah. You won't That's see anything right. about feasts, even though people will say, well, the moon is, is for, for months and the moon is for feasts. And if, some people even say the moon is for weeks or for Sabbaths. But, you know, that's Astarte, Ashtaroth worship, devil worship at its best. The moon has no significance when it comes to anything holy. The moon, though, is used for agricultural seasons. And, of course, summer and winter, they work together with the stars and the sun. Um, the moon works with the stars and the sun. But it has nothing to do with holiness, a Sabbath day, a festival, or the beginning of months at all. And that's what you have to understand. We're not saying, you know, you don't look at the moon. But if you're a farmer and you know about the moon, you can use it for agriculture, which, you know, you could study and learn about it. I had to learn about these things myself. I don't own a farm. And I have a small, tiny garden, but the understanding of farming and time frames is something that I've researched and put it to the test on the almanac and something that you can do as well. And you can research the agricultural seasons of Israel or Jerusalem. You know, it's all there for you to, to get this information, but we've did most of the legwork for you today. So hopefully this will help to guide you in the right direction. Now, I do know that there is a controversy with the word seasons. Uh, as you see it here, Moed, because this word seasons can also mean appointed times. And then the festivals can be, be called appointed times. And some people will say, well, this he said that he gave the sun, moon, and stars for festivals. But this is not the appointed times he's talking about. The appointed seasons of the Most High, summer, winter, you know, the agricultural seasons, 
all of that which we read. I mean, here's these appointed times right here. Seed time, harvest, cold heat, summer, winter, day and night. All of these are appointed times by the Most High. But in terms of the seasons, um, naturally, but when it comes again to the festivals, he points out what the Sabbath day is and the festivals, what the, when they are. That's right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to show you, uh, read a little bit from Wiki Seasons here. It's from Wikipedia, dealing with seasons. I'm just going to give a, a quick read. I'm not going to read everything here, but I'm going to skip. But I do want, you know, the listeners to pay attention. Um you could also, everything that all the resources I have, you can check for yourself. And it's good to learn about things, right? Where I think sometimes we take for granted that, you know, you know what a month is, you know what a season is because it's, it's almost on an everyday use. But it's good to understand that there are um, various understandings of seasons as well. So a season is a division of the year based on changes in weather, ecology, and the number of daylight hours in a given region. On Earth, seasons are the result of this axial parallelism. So we don't believe in the globe, but they teach the globe and the tilted thing. So they're going to hear a lot of a little bit about that. But we don't follow that. But we de definitely um, we're just going to include it in the read just to give an understanding. Um, so yeah, of Earth's tilted orbit around the sun, it's the sun that moves, not the Earth. In temperate and polar regions, the seasons are marked by changes in intensity of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface, variations of which cause animals to undergo hibernation or to migrate or plants to be dormant. Various cultures define the number of the number and nature of seasons, <clears throat> excuse me, and nature of seasons based on regional variations. And as such, there are a number of both modern and historical cultures whose number of seasons varies. Now pay attention here. It says, the Northern Hemisphere where we live experiences, this is something to know. A lot of people don't know this because they're deceived by the false astronomical seasons. The Northern Hemisphere experiences most direct sunlight during May, June, and July. Thus the tradition, traditional celebration of midsummer in June. Like we mm. said, the summer solstice is the middle of the seasons. Because we're talking right. about here direct sunlight as the hemisphere faces as the hemisphere faces the sun. For the summer, southern hemisphere, it is instead November, December, and January. So it's reversed. We're not going to be talking about that reversal now, but it's still notice it's November, December, and January, and true scriptural winter begins in November. That's right. Okay, we can go. So it says right here. Due to seasonal lag, June, July, and August are the warmest months in the Northern Hemisphere, while December, January, and February are the warmest months in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, let me just move down a little bit. There's different types of seasons. So as you can see on the screen, all of this stuff when they talk about the tilt of the Earth, all of that is science and evil. It's not true. And we will have a lesson on the earth and all of the sun, moon, and stars and how it might work another time. But I want to get down to the tropics. Now, the tropics, and this is where, again, where Israel is and this is where the bays you see, where it's basically warm along the equator. The tropical and subtropical regions see little annual fluctuation of sunlight temperature due to Earth's moderate 23.4 degrees. All right. Let me stop here for a second. It says 23.4, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody say something? Oh, sorry. No. 23.4 degrees. And um, what I want to say is that they're taking this from 90 degrees, right? And they're dealing with a 90 degree right angle. <laughs> All I can say is that when you minus 23.4 from 90, 90, it gives you 60.6, you understand? And mm. this is where they start to, to formulate their devilish 666 system of seasons and years and time. Mm. It's something for you to think about. Oh, All right. Um, hmm. Mid latitude. All right. Most calendars, most calendars base 
based partitions use a four season model to democrate the warmest and coldest seasons, which are further separated by two intermediate seasons. Calendar based reckoning defines the seasons in relative rather than absolute terms. So the coldest quarter year is considered winter, even if floral or flowers activity is regularly observed during it, despite the traditional association of flowers with spring and summer. The major exception is in the tropics where, as already noted, the winter season is not observed. So, you know, when we're kind of looking at this understanding of seasons, if you're in North America where we are, in Canada, Toronto, and if you're just looking at, you know, just cold temperatures, you might see that it could be cold, but the flowers are still blooming. So you have to have a good understanding of, you know, when these temperatures, are, what, what's the difference between weather and climate? Climate, yeah. Right? Weather is day-to-day, -day, climate is on a long scale. The four seasons have been, now listen to this, D. The four seasons have been in use since at least Roman times, as in Verum, Resticarum, of Vero. Vero says that spring, summer, autumn, and winters start on the 23rd day of the sun's passage through the Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, and Scorpio, respectively. Nine years before he wrote, Julius Caesar had reformed the calendar, so Vero was able to assign the dates of February 7th, May 9th, August mm -hmm. 11th, and November 10th to the start of spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Wow, very interesting. So the interesting part about this for the brethren and sisters of Zion, for you know those who might not be in the know, is that this is actually true. The first week of, of February, May, mm -hmm. August, and November are the first weeks of spring, summer, winter, um, and fall, so to speak. And this falls in line. So what I found over the research, and this is this new, again, findings. Every year we get something more, sometimes even a lot more. But people know of these things. This is information that's out there. And so we're going back to the ancient paths because the astronomical calendar is dealing with paganism and the equinox is dealing with worshiping Easter, Astarte, and all of these things. But there is a true understanding of seasons as you're seeing right here. Yes. So we have meteorological seasons. We'll talk about that later, it's dealing with temperature, right? So when it comes to meteorological seasons, winter, um, it'll begin in, winter will begin in December and they'll say that is the cold. December, January, and February are the coldest months. And then March, April, and May, they have three months, and this is all dealing with just temperature. More on that later. Now we have the astronomical seasons. Again, this is what we normally are used to, which is utilizes the Gregorian calendar and the Julian calendar. We won't talk about that right now. But let's look a little bit at solar timing, which we're going to cover as well. Solar timing is based on insulation in which the solstices and equinoxes look at this, are seen as the midpoints mid of the seasons, right? This was the case with the seasons described. Remember, we just talked about Vero um, up a little bit earlier, earlier mm -hmm. that guy Vero yeah. or whatever. He, they as well, known it was the midpoints. It was the method for reckoning seasons in medieval Europe, especially by the Celts or the Celts, and is still ceremony observed in Ireland and some East, East Asian countries. Summer is defined as the quarter of the year with the greatest insulation and winter with, as the quarter with the least. So insulation means sunlight. Radiation means sunlight when you're talking about these things. So when you hear solar radiation, just sunlight, how long the sun is out, right? Mm -hmm. From it rises until it sets. Now let's continue. The solar season changes at the cross-quarter days, which are about three to four weeks earlier than the meteorological seasons or the weather, the temperature seasons, and six to seven weeks earlier than the season starting at the equinoxes and solstices. Thus, the day, the day of greatest insulation or, or sunlight is designated as midsummer, as noted in William Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is set on the Summer solstice. Summer solstice. Mm -hmm. On the Celtic calendar, the start of the season corresponds to four pagan agricultural festivals. The traditional first day of winter is the 1st of November, Samhain, 
or the Celtic origin of Halloween. Spring starts February 1st. This is where you get your kind of Groundhog's Day understanding from. Summer begins on May 1st. This is where you get the Maypole and Cinco de Mayo festivals from. And the first day of autumn is on August 1st as well. And what you can see here is just a simple basic chart. Winter, 1st of November, so on and so forth. All wow. right. So, so these Europeans knew about these things for a while. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's move on. So again, we said there's three types of seasonal observations. Astronomical, dealing with the equinoxes and seasons. Meteorological or thermal seasons. And solar or daylight seasons. And I want to let you know that since Ja made the sun, moon, and stars, especially the sun is the greater light for signs, season, days, and years, we're, we, we are, you're going to see that the solar seasons of the world, they know, they know it's the true scriptural seasons as well, of which it is. And a lot of people haven't heard about the solar seasons or them taught out there, but now you do. But we have... Um, of the Zion Assembly of John Jehoshua, we never knew about the solar seasons. We never knew about all of this information here. It was just something that was revealed uh, to Brother David, Elder David, and on upon a lot of great research, we've seen these things. And this is before the internet was on the scene. I want to remind you of that as well. Yes. So again, astronomical seasons are based on the position of the earth in relation to the sun. So again, we teach that the Astronomy, the solar system, all of that is false. And this deals with the, this astronomical calendar of the Earth going around the sun, of which it doesn't. And again, when you're dealing with astronomical calendar, you have to have an, a celestial sphere that deals with the North Celestial Pole Star. And this star is really what they say governs the seasons when the sun passes through these constellations, especially this North Pole. But these directions are falsified. And everything, all the information regarding the celestial sphere is false. When you look at the meteorological seasons, again, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, and February for the meteorological season. These are not just seasons, but these seasons are just based upon the coldest time of year, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Um, winter is December, January, and February would be the coldest months. And this is, again, looking on the Earth, uh, scale of, of the Earth that way, or your local vicinity. And then the hottest months would be June, July, and August. But that's going with temperature. That's not related to sunlight or anything of that nature, because when you're dealing with temperature, there's a lag, it's called. It's, it's called seasonal lag, where it's like when the weather starts getting warmer, all right, the land is heating up, but the water takes a little bit longer to heat up than the land does. And so True. this causes a lag for it to be over a month. And this is why like July would be hotter than May, of course, or even hotter than June, even though June has the, the longest day. That's right, because it takes time for um, the temperatures to, to increase. So that's why when the summer solstice comes around after the the longest day of the year and daylight starts decreasing from that point. But guess what? The temperature starts increasing during after that time because now mm -hmm. the sun is, is going back in the same direction it came and now you're catching the brunt of the heat. And so that's why the months of July and June are, are so hot compared to, to, to May. That's right. So again, the meteorological seasons are these three month groupings as you just saw. And when we compare the meteorological to the astronomical seasons, again, fall is September, October, November, whereas fall begins September 22nd. Winter begins December 21st, March 20th, June 21st, dealing with the equinoxes and solstices. So again, this is just a comparison of these two understandings, but they are not the scriptural understanding. The scriptural understanding comes with the solar seasons, and they're based upon the amount of sunlight in which the solstices and equinoxes are seen as the midpoints of the seasons. It was the method for reckoning the four seasons in medieval Europe. I think this is the thing that we covered already, right? Mm -hmm. When I was reading that other one, I just put it in a, a writing form. So again, these the solar seasons dealing with the 
is defined as the three months of the year with the greatest amount of sunlight and winter as the with the least amount of sunlight. Scripture. Ecclesiasticus 33, verse 7. Why doth one day excel another, when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? So we've seen, we're giving the sun a lot of uh, credit here, right? It's all, every day, you know, the light of the sun is what lets you know, right, that days are passing by. It's setting in and it's rising, so to speak. So this is why we feel that, you know, coming with a solar understanding, obviously, for the seasons, because it's perfect with the scriptural seasons, is more, you know, in tune with reality. Verse 8, by the knowledge of Jah, they were distinguished, and he altered seasons and feasts. Some of them he had made high days and hallowed them, and some of them he had made ordinary days. See, the Most High makes things holy, right? That's right. You know, if he says this day is holy, then this, this, this that day is holy. He's not using astronomical beginnings of lunar cycles as to say something is holy, whether it's the Sabbath day, whether it's a month or a festival. So if you're caught up into that understanding, please research it. And just don't do it out of ignorance because you feel there's nothing better to do. Do some research. The truth is out there. I mean, we're here. A lot of people don't know about us, but... You know, over time, with Jah's will and with his spirit, he's going to make things grow. It's not really about us making it grow, but the Most High adding to the assembly each day. That's right. What we have to understand is that Jah, he measures time and he numbers everything. Right? And the scripture says in Psalms, you know, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So when Jah starts numbering things in days from day one, while we count and record these things, Jah will let us know what days are hollow and holy and what days are not. You know, when Jah revealed his calendar to Moses, he let him know that that day was the first day of the year. And from that day forward, Moses recorded. Jah let them know that the seventh day was holy. And then that same month, he let them know that the feast of Passover was on the eve of the 14th day and so on. And so Jah dictated to Moses what days were holy. That's not right. Not showing to Moses, look up in the sky and when you see the moon dark or full, this is when the, the days are holy. None of that was spoken to Moses whatsoever. No, no, he didn't tell him to look at anything. Okay, so I'm going to show you a solar spring video, a little video here. And um, this is a, this, this should give you an understanding of the solar seasons. And, and then, yeah, I'm going to do the solar seasons. Let's do that. Last time we checked out astronomical and meteorological seasons, but this time we will check out solar seasons. Solar seasons are actually based on insulation or solar radiation where the solstices and equinoxes are viewed as the midpoints of the season. Solar seasons change about three to four weeks ahead of the meteorological seasons and about six to seven weeks ahead of the astronomical seasons. And the best way to explain the seasons when it comes to solar is to look at a chart here involving the insulation at various latitudes in the northern hemisphere, starting off with the equator, 30 degrees north, 60 degrees north, and 90 degrees north. And we're mostly going to focus on the 30, 60, and 90 degree latitudes here when it comes to the increasing and decreasing amount. So let's first start off here when it comes to spring, which consists of increasing insulation or solar radiation. And that's depicted here in the green for the months of February, March, and April. And you can already tell that those three areas those three lines are actually beginning to increase and it's with the equinox being at the midpoint of that solar spring. Now we move on into summer where we see the months of maximum insulation or solar radiation and that's depicted here in the red and that happens throughout the months of May, June and July. Now we start going in the opposite direction here as we start going into autumn here and that actually begins in August, September and October as we start seeing decreasing amounts of insulation or solar radiation. So you can already see how it's already hit its maximum in the summer and now it's beginning to see that downward trend. And then lastly in the blue there we have winter in where's the minimum 
insulation, and that actually happens in the months of November, December, but also in the months of January. And that is all when it comes to solar seasons. That's a good video. Yeah, very thorough. And again, it's 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 accurate. It's very, very true. How, that's how the seasons are supposed to move under that solar understanding or the scriptural understanding. Now, here's this solar spring. And this is why, you know, we when we deal with spring from February, it's because of the land of Israel. But um, and let me just show the. this is a short one of solar spring to give you an understanding because we start spring in February and people say, oh, that's you no know, foolishness. Welcome to solar spring. You may have never heard of it before, but solar seasons are based on the amount of daylight we have each day. And from today through May 4th, we will have the biggest increase in daylight through the whole year. And this is called solar spring. And you'll start to notice big changes in our atmosphere between now and May 4th. The big reason why? The sun angle. Think back to the winter solstice. The sun very low on the horizon, only 24 degrees above the horizon. But over the last couple of months since the winter solstice, the sun has been steadily inching up a bit in the sky. Today it's at a 32 degree angle and from now through May 4th that will continue to go up at a very quick rate and then slow down a little bit as we approach the summer solstice when it reaches, reaches its highest point in the sky at an altitude of more than 70 degrees. It does take a little while for the temperatures to respond to this higher sunlight though. That's why the warmest weather doesn't happen until the sun Summer. Reason for that, all of the oceans covering the globe. If we didn't have the water that takes a while to warm up, the temperatures would more evenly match the sun angle, which is already on the way up as we speak. But that said, you'll probably start to notice in these next several days, the later and later sunsets. Today, 510 in the evening, February 21st, 530 in the evening, and then we spring forward on March 10th, and the sunset will be nearly 7 p.m. By the way, the sun rises tomorrow morning, the first one before 7 in the morning. I'm meteorologist Ryan Breton, Fox 61. Can I mm -hmm. okay. That was a good short explanation of that. Yes. Yes, it was. So this lets you know, as Andrea is saying here, Andrea pushes it in here. Uh, good video. Look how they know the seasons. Yeah, they, they know. And family, this is what we're talking about. You're not going to find this information dealing with the true seasons, you know, initially. And this is how we know how other calendars are, are false, right? How they don't line up with scripture because everything that we've been covering so far is in scripture um, that way. And I think um, Karee said, had said, yeah, there is a, there has to be a transition, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Into the seasons for sure. That's right. All right, so here we are again, the solar seasons, and just again looking at what we're talking about here. So January is the last month of jazz year as, as we teach. And February right here is the first month of Bib. True spring starts in February. And this goes all the way through to the end of April or the beginning of March. And in the middle, we have the spring equinox right about here where it shows, you know, they say 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night, right? And then we got from this point, from May through to the end of July or the beginning of August, we have true summer with the longest day of the year, the summer solstice being the midpoint. Now, I want you to think about this family. If, all right, so you know, at the summer solstice, people are going to say, hey, it's the beginning of summer on June 21st or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, like two days after that, the days are going to start to get shorter. That's right. Almost, I would say even immediately, the days are getting shorter now. Now, they don't get shorter dramatically no. because the great dramatic decrease comes in autumn. Just like how the great dramatic increase comes in February through to the end of April. But you see that when you look at it, this chart here, it's almost like it makes so, so much sense. The middle of summer is going to be the longest day of the year. It's, it's at its peak. And then once That's it right. gets to its peak, now it's there. And now we got another three, you know, some more months coming in for the rest of summer. It it's, makes logical sense. It makes solar sense. It makes scriptural sense. And no, again, other calendar in the world has this understanding 
in their formulated um, in in their formulation of their calendars at all. And this is how we know easily any calendar that bling, begins with the, the spring equinox or a moon is the devil's calendar. And the devil has deceived people in the world, like we said. It's true. They they only rely on 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 the phases of the moon, and they have left all these stones unturned. That's right. Not even checking out when exactly. Not even checking out these things. All right. So then we go to true autumn again from August to the beginning of, of November. We have the mid equinox in September, and then we have. From November to the end of January, again, we have the midwinter solstice, which is the longest night and the shortest day. So this is how just true seasons go. You know, you sing it from Babylon with their solar seasons. Wow. Praise Jah. Praise Jah. So again, I showed this before, but now I hope this makes a lot more sense now, this chart, right? Notice we say the spring is usually the first week of February. First week of May, first week of August, or first week of November. This year it extends up until the 10th, which is actually three days longer than a week, but this is as far as it goes. And then it starts to go back a little bit, back to the six, sevens, and you know, February, it even goes back to February 1st, equaling a big one as well. Move on, D. Yes. I'm just going to read some. Very quickly here, D. You could probably give it a couple of reads here. Um, sure. These, this is um, this is this information on the internet about people who know things about. And I've used these try to charts a lot over the years, but you know, when you don't know something, you don't know something. But the thing is, you know, these things you have to dig for, and they're hidden. So let's just give it a, a good read, D, and we'll we'll move on. Sure. There's a widespread misconception in this country which extends, I might note, to the makers of most calendars, dictionaries, and encyclopedias, that summer officially starts on the day of the summer solstice, June 21st or 22nd, which is the longest day of the year. Americans also believe, one, that there is some valid scientific reason for doing it that way, and two, that everybody in the Northern Hemisphere does it that way and always has. None of these things are true. So far as I have been able to discover, no scientific or governmental body has ever form formally declared that summer starts on the solstice. Certainly, there is no good scientific reason for doing so. You see that? Mm -hmm. No, even science, even though you know we, we shoot down science greatly, but even according to science, just scriptural seasons even disprove science. Wow. Continuing. You're absolutely correct. June 20th or 21st, as the date varies, is actually midsummer, with summer having begun on May Day or May 1st. Our modern almanacs, calendars, and often weather people are simply wrong when they say summer begins on June 20th. Simply wrong, AD. Simply. They're in error, yes. As often happens in our modern world, the older traditions and definitions, usually more accurate due to our ancestors having been far better attuned to the earth and her cycles, have become blurred in the rat race we now find ourselves in the midst of. That's right. True so statement. in other words, the ancients knew better of the true seasons than we do now. We're being deceived. That's right. And these people who are in control of these things are aware of what the ancients knew, and so they're able to manipulate and control the information that gets out to the people and they end up lying to us and the devil is using them to deceive the whole world. That's right. When we look at just a def definition of the word midsummer, it says the middle or the height of summer. But then it says, number two, another name for the summer solstice. Summer solstice. Yeah, so this is what we say. Like you can see that there's a deception here, family. There's two different understandings of calendars. Is the summer solstice the beginning of summer, true summer, or is it the middle uh, of true summer? And we're teaching that it definitely is the middle. When you're dealing with astronomy, people say, you know, the sun, moon, and stars, John made them on day four, and you to look at them, but you have to look at them with a clean understanding of signs, season, days, and years. Don't use a scientific astronomical understanding, which they're getting you to look at this star and that star. Just much more simpler than that. 
And they, you know, as we've been saying a lot, when I say we say they, people who are calendar dissidents, the, the high ups, the governments, those high people who know stuff. And a lot of the weather, a lot of the information I get from weather meteorologists as well, I know they know because I watch the weather every day and I like weather stations. And of course, you know, I love ca uh, calendars and, and that kind of thing. And they always slip up and they can't help it. But when it comes to the true season, say, oh man, it feels like late, uh, late spring or the beginning of, of, of summer. When it's like, yeah, it is the beginning of summer, but uh -huh. you know, this is something that I know that they know. And even if they try to hide it, you can't hide something that stands out so clear. That's true. Continuing. I'm not sure how those who are supposed to know these things ever got something so simple, so wrong, but they did. It comes down to deception, right, D? <laughs> That's right. They were deceived. This is what the double does. It is a simple thing that says, hey, has Josh said? Oh, no, he didn't say that. A simple lie became a big thing. By the way, the 20th or 21st of December is also midwinter, the middle of winter and not the first day of winter, which is actually the 1st of November. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it just be a lot simpler and far less confusing if everyone, the meteorologist, the almanacs, and the calendars, and whomever else might be considered knowledgeable in this field just admitted that they had it wrong for a time and went back to the true and accurate designations? I think most of the public would appreciate it greatly. I certainly know I would. Yeah. I I, I appreciate Jazz Almanac for these reasons. It's the truth. Yeah. Right? You see, when you're in tune to, to nature the proper way, not like how these Zen masters, want, <coughs> Zen masters want you to get in tune to things, but you know, the true beginning of seasons, you know, the, the beginning of a 24-hour day and date, all of these things have an effect on our spirituality. Right. And so but people are thinking, hey, you know, we're in spring still. We're in mid spring right now and, and we're really in summer. There's going to be a little bit of a lacking of that understanding of being connected to reality. And the That's most right. high wants us to be connected to his reality, his natural cycles that he made, his holy days. But the devil knows that if we get disconnected, we lose our power. And this is what True. it's about. And this information that we have is great. Again, today's lesson is only scratching the surface. You definitely have to go examine. And let me say this too. For those people who don't want to be patient, uh, I'm going to give respect to um, this brother here, Billy Stefek um, from Texas, an older gentleman, but patient, right? Checking out everything, putting it to the test rather than wanting things quick. You cannot get this kind of information quick. Like you could hear it, but if you want to understand any information, you got to get a thorough understanding of it. And don't be too, too much in a hurry because Jah wants us to be humble, right? What does this David Hosey say? The humblest calf sucks the most milk, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because the mother, the cow can, mother can hold back milk sometimes. And some of them are just so greedy, want to, you know, get all the milk when the one that's humble and meek the mother will let off more milk that way. So we got to approach these things in a humble way. And like I say, you have to have patience. Don't want to, don't think any of these videos, you're going to get the knowledge in 15, 20 minute videos. It doesn't work like that. I mean, if you know stuff, you can watch things quicker, but it won't, it won't sink in and you won't understand it. So be patient. Good point. Again, science doesn't override jazz words. First Timothy six, Verse 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. That's right. See, some people want to put science over right, the scriptures. Yes, we know that science sometimes can, you know, give an understanding to a just, just creation, but they don't tell you how it goes. It just gives you an understanding of how it works. But anytime you're using science to override scriptural truths, there's something wrong. And we have designed assembly of John Joshua. We don't do that. And we have science has its place, but it's definitely has nothing to do with anything spiritually true. That's right. It has its place when it's in line with Jah's word, right? Otherwise, it says some professing have erred concerning the faith. 
Mm. It requires faith. If you believe in what Josh says, that's your faith. But if you want to believe in what science says, then your faith is in science and not in Ja. That's right. Well said. Okay. Let me see here. Go ahead. Read the top part there, D. On the Celtic calendar, the start of the seasons correspond to four pagan agricultural festivals. One, the traditional first day of winter is the November 1st, or Samhain, the Celtic origin of Halloween. Two, spring starts February 1st, symbolic, the Celtic origin of Groundhog's Day. Three, summer begins on May 1st, known as Beltane, or the Celtic origin of May Day. And four, the first day of autumn is August, 4, is August 1st, Lugnasadad. <laughs> yeah, Lugnasad. <laughs> Lugnasad. Mm -hmm. Yes, or Lamas as well. So uh, one thing I want to say is that you see these things and it says, hey, well, it's showing you these pagan things and they're pagan festivals. Yes, these were pagans back then, but they were called, it was the Christians who used the astronomical calendar that called them pagans even though they were using the true calendar. Now, we're not advocating um, All Saints Day and St. Brigitte's Day and May Day and Halloween, but these are like fossilized customs that let you know that they know the seasons because Halloween is really the end of summer. It's an end of summer season or the harvest season. That's why they have pumpkins, which are the last to come up you know, in, in the harvest as well. And then, of course, winter's coming on, so... They, they honor, you know, winter's what you consider like a dead time, right? Mm -hmm. the trees are dying, the, the plants go away, insects go away and whatnot. And so they've paganized it and it added the, the idea of death to Halloween. And then they give you all kind of evil stuff, right? But again, these things are here just to keep us in confusion. But in terms of their understanding of the beginning of seasons, very, very accurate and true according to scripture. That's true. All the heathen has done is they've just taken the true beginning of the seasons and put their own celebrations and paganistic customs attached to them. That's right, Dean. That's exactly right. Uh, Brother Billy says, yes, patience, because there's so much deception out there. It's hard to find and see what is truth. It is. Because, I mean, we're one, we're one of many people that you're going to read calendars, and they're going to say, they're probably going to talk just like how we talk. That calendar is false, and this is false. And so, you know, and I hear it too. And I, I even step out of myself, so to speak, and look at our ministry and say, man, people must just think that, you know, we're just in line with all of the other kind of calendar dissidents out there. And it seems like, as our Brother Billy said here, you know, like, you're just going to have to take time. And um, I'm glad that Brother David, give thanks to Ja, the Brother David, Elder David, you know, had put forth this work because it's, it's a lifetime work to get the calendar. And he put yeah. in his life's work into it and is resting in hope to be with the Messiah and his kingdom in the first resurrection. And I pray to the Messiah that we can all be in there too and, you know, feel good about the work and the labor and the things that Ja has given us. That's right. Good point. Let us all be patient in seeking John and learning the truth. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, their, uh, a circle of their understanding. Spring starts. I'm just going to kind of go through it. Mid-spring. Summer starts. This lets you know that they know, even though they might be pagan, they understand the true seasons. And like David said, they just add paganistic uh worship to it and ceremonies to it to move away from Ja. But these are true. Now, for the most part, everybody sees when you come into an understanding of calendars and then people are putting forth the lunar calendar or say, hey, the calendar's messed up. This is usually what you first come across, right? The idea of September, October, November, December. Mm -hmm. Um, being the numerical value of 7, 8, 9, and 10. Sept means 7. Oct means 8. Octopus, octagon. Uh, septagon is 7. Um, nove means is, is 9. For Latin, 9. Dieci or dec, December, D-E-C. Decimal point, which is one-tenth. A decade. Mm -hmm. 
right? Um, the tenth month. So it's like they did a double twist here, right? When it came comes to calendars. And so when you see this, obviously people say, hey, well, you know, if if uh, September is the seventh month, then this lets us know that March would be the first month, right? Because you have March, April, May, June, July, August, September would be number seven. And so they say, hey, it's really the seventh month, even though on the calendar it shows that it's the ninth. But the truth of the matter is it's neither the seventh nor the ninth. They're mm -hmm. sandwiching the truth in between. It's actually right. the eighth. The eighth. So with an understanding what we teach greatly, we're not just making this up, but like I said, in this lesson, we'll cover some things, but other lessons, we'll have to get to that later. But December is truly the 11th month. January is truly the 12th month of the scripture year. And remember the solar seasons, if you want to go back to that understanding, remember it said February is when things increase and mm -hmm. that is very true. So true new year and true spring is the first month. A bit would be equivalent to February. And the second month would be mid-spring, March, when you have that, uh, the, the vernal equinox, right? But people yeah. believe that March uh, begins the new year. And this is why people, like even Truth Aneta did, and no disrespect to him because he said he does it, he's learning about calendars and it's a lot. And he even probably knows, probably try to take a dip in there because I know he loves to research things. And when he started to see what was going on, it's not it's not a it's not a work uh, of even one to two years to be honest you have to really research this thing here yeah. um, if you're studying from scratch especially so really march is the beginning of the false lunar equinox year but it's truly just second month so we have this bold statement very very bold i, I don't say it's prideful but bold and confident any calendars d you could give this a read still talking to any me. calendars that use the equinoxes and stole solstices as the beginning of seasons are false any calendar that uses the solar system for time reckoning is also false now if you read your scripture the scripture does show you that the earth is still doesn't move and that the sun moon and stars move I know how that sounds like in the world and the debate about flat earth and, and heliocentrism and geocentrism could be like, oh, as soon as people hear anything about that, they want to step back. But the truth of the matter is, and people know that from a scriptural point of view, the sun, moon, and stars actually move. And this is the true reality. But nonetheless, I know that the solar system that has been set up for us is a big light. It's, it's called heliocentricity, helio dealing with the sun. Mm -hmm. Even the name Lucifer is Halal. It's sun or Satan worship. That's why they put the sun in the middle of this evil solar system when really the largest thing out there and the biggest thing out there is the earth. The mm -hmm. earth is the center and the middle point of which the sun, moon, and stars you know, operate around. That's the, right. the earth doesn't move at all. Continuing. The solar system and vernal equinoxes are devices of the devil. A list of the false satanic astronomical calendars are the modern Gregorian and Julian calendars, the professed Hebrew Luni solar calendar with a 19 year cycle, the professed Enoch or Enochian calendar, the King David Maserat zodiac astronomical calendar, the modern Abib and Barley Luni solar calendar, the ancient Egyptian and Babylonian calendars, the ancient Greek and Roman calendars the Ethiopian Orthodox calendars, etc., the barley harvest calendar. Wow, there's a lot there. So, all false. All false. Uh, Billy says, the Bible appendix shows March as the beginning of the Messiah's year. That's right. And a lot of these most, it's like how the, the thing, the, one of the quotes back there, most encyclopedias, Bible references, and books, have these things wrong, right? And so the devil has done a work. And this work was manipulated and done hundreds of years ago, maybe even thousands of years ago, to bring these things to make people think that they're true. But yes, I find that um, there's even a, a common video going out there that's saying, hey, they found this Bible from 1827, and it shows that the beginning of the year is actually March, not January, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I get that. 
and I guess there's stages to where you start to, you, you gravitate to once you start questioning calendars, because you have to really question these things. It has to be an interest to you. Otherwise, everything will go over your head. So usually people come into it that way. They learn about March and the equinoxes and the solstices, but now we're at higher learning. So yes, Billy, I hear what you're saying. So just looking at Jazz calendar year for this Jubilee year, and remember, I like to color code everything, especially to separate summer and winter. So we have the early rains beginning in, in February, going through to the end of April. Then we have summer for six months as well, going from May to the end of October. And it's like near the end or the middle of October when the rains actually just start, but November is the official beginning of winter or the latter rains. So you can see there's six months of rains and six months uh, of summer or dryness. It's just that the, the summer is in the middle of those rainy seasons, right? Yes. And of course, the Most High's calendar has 364 days because seven times 52 is 364. And no, this is not the Enochian calendar. That's so right. we just run May 11th now. So we're into the summer season, the scriptural summer season, the solar summer season. Mm -hmm. A lot of charts to look at, but this is how the chart, a Zion Assembly of Jah chart is dealing with the true calendar almanac, giving you again some color codes, the summer fruits, the autumn. This is six months of summer, but we'll call the last uh, three months of summer autumn, or you can call it latter summer, which I like to do sometimes as well. Yes, that's appropriate. And winter, again, beginning the 10th month. So this is how the month orders are truly supposed to be, according to scripture and the land of Israel as well. Script. Psalms 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So this is what we do. And as you can see, there's a blank calendar out here. And this is something I just put this blank calendar. As, hey, this is where you can start yourself. Get a blank calendar and start, you know, working it out. What you can do is when you have this calendar, have, have a blank calendar, and you go to the Genesis chapter 1, you can start filling in things like the first day of creation and the whole first creation week, and you'll get to number 7. And you know mm -hmm. that's an end of a week, and then you can know that after number 7 comes number 8, and that would be the beginning of the next week, and you can start from there. And just by doing this simple count, it's actually very foundational. And a lot of people say, well, how do you know it's in February, your beginning of the year, and it's this day and that day? Because we know the true foundation. So if you have the foundation, it's like you have it in front of you, you can follow it through all through time because, you know, everything is in cycles, 28-year cycles, yearly cycles, weekly cycles, monthly cycles, seasonal cycles, meaning that it repeats all the time. So once you know where the, the calendar, the almanac, the foundation of it, which is Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, the first day of creation, you just follow it through. And then, of course, it gets a little bit more tedious once you get outside of the first month. But this is how we do it. And this is what you can do as well. And, you know, start from there in a certain understanding. And this will, you know, if, if you do have interest, Jah will spark your mind. This is how he does with the Holy Spirit. He, he makes you more interested in something to go research it more and then makes things more plain to you and brings it to your understanding. That's right. This is exactly what Moses would have done when Josh spoke to him and started numbering days. Remember, Moses wrote down everything that Josh commanded him, and that his calendar would have been no different. Mm -hmm. That's right. And some believe, you know, and I believe too, that, you know, of course, they took the calendar out of the scripture. They hid it. So we know that Moses was up there two times for 40 days and 40 nights. And Truthfully, he could have had the calendar formulated perfectly. In the book of Jubilees, it lets you know that Moses had the calendar as well. Although we don't, you know, we don't like endorse a lot of these apoc apocryphal books or anything like that. But they have a couple of references. Like we don't endorse the book of Enoch, but it does mention 364 days. But we don't like to use it because that book is false anyways. But nonetheless, yeah, good word, D. This is how you would, you would start your formulation. So here's some scriptural aspects that the Most High has revealed to the Zion Assembly regarding his calendar. 
scripture wisdom of solomon 7 verse 17 for he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements the beginning ending and myths of the times the alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons the circuits of years and the position of stars that's right so this is a verse from the wisdom of solomon but we know these things this is, this is what we do know we know how the world was made i mean many people say they know too because you can just read genesis but we teach genesis the first day of creation far different than anybody else does we don't believe in a million years gap theory we don't believe that the most high made the earth at that time in terms of a formulated earth but that it was the earth matter the material that he made on on that day and that material that earth matter was submerged in the waters until the third day when the father brought them forth and shaped everything and formulated mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. so we teach greatly that you know the, the first day of creation should be understood this way because if it's understood any other way it just messes up the sequence of events in creation week and um yeah that's this basic understanding of that also the beginning ending and midst of the times we have a great understanding of chronology you always hear us saying it's the year 62 24 from creation and it could seem to people oh these guys just think they know what they're talking about but it's actually numbers charts formulated from day one i mean we have a whole book like we have five books thick this is just as jo the revelation of john's almanac right here right 200 and so pages and gets into to great depths of things and so we have one of these books i'm, what I'm trying to again emphasize is patience for everybody and that we've done our work we're not just making things up and now is the time that the Father is just reveal, giving us his spirit to have the opportunity to reveal these things. So chronology is dealing with that. The alterations and turning of the sun, dealing with the seasons as well. And it lets you know that, again, the sun moves, not the earth. And, of course, the change of seasons, the circuits of years. You've heard us speak about the sabbatical years, the 28-year cycle, the 70-year cycle, the 700-year cycle, the 1,000-year cycle, the 7,000-year cycle. All those are circuits of years, right? Now, we don't get too much into the position of stars because really that's not our interest, but we do have an, a good understanding of, you know, the heavens in a basic way to communicate with other people who use calendars because that's what they're going to use, the constellations, you know, some uh, understandings of the lunar cycles and, and various things like that. We have that understanding, but we don't get into you know exact details because for the most part those details have already been worked out with the sun moon and stars over these years mm -hmm. so here's the days months and season of jazz minor sabbath year i'm sorry this was last year but nonetheless it still goes for every year any, anyways outside of the 371 days it's 364 but we're in the beginning of the month judah the fourth month equivalent to May. And we can see that Abib, the first month, has 28 days. It begins on the first day of the week. Zif, the second month, equivalent to March, has 31 days. It begins on the first day of the week. Savan, the third month, equivalent to April, has 30 days. It begins on the fourth day of the week or Wednesday. And just going to summer, Judah, the fourth month, which we're in now, equivalent to May, has 31 days. And it began on the sixth day of the week, which was Friday, two days ago, or yesterday, we'd even say, right? Mm. Yesterday, yeah, we're on the seventh day, yesterday. And as you can see, throughout the year, we have everything mapped out to the T. Then we have just two six months summer and winter seasons also. Now we put 371 days because this is a, um, and this is my kind of oversight. I was using this from last year because it was a sabbatical year. And I try not to get, you know, try to update things, but there's normally 364 days in a year, but every seventh year, there's an extra seven days. 364 plus seven is 371. This all works out in the 28 year perfect cycle, keeping all the festivals um, uh, and holy days in their proper places throughout the seasons. Now I wanna say this, 
and there's a lot of questions like where do you get a lot of these numbers from? Where can you find that in the Bible? There's a lot of things that are not in the scripture, even though we're, we're using the scripture, but the principles of the count and understanding is in the scripture. But you're not going to see 371 or 364 or how many days are here and there. As a matter of fact, you don't even get to see in the scripture um, how long a month is past. I think that I think it might be the 26th or 27th day. It doesn't yeah. mention anything about the 28th, 29th, 30. Uh, 30th day of any month at all it goes up to maybe 20, might even be 24, but 26 is what I think it is. Um, that way, so some things are not all in the Bible that way, but it can be worked out, and this is where the patience comes in, right? It's like putting a puzzle, puzzle together, and it's easy to put a, a big piece puzzle together of you know 100 pieces, but I don't know if you've ever tried them 5,000 piece puzzles. I don't know if you've ever done puzzles, D, but you look uh, at it, it's daunting, yeah. But each each piece matters, and it takes time to know where that piece actually fits. I used to like puzzles a lot when I was a child, and um, I know my son was really, really, really good at doing puzzles. Yes, I, I, re I remember when he was younger, man, he, he was an expert puzzler. Yeah, <laughs> expert. Yeah, I would consider him an expert puzzler. Like, he could pick up the piece, and he doesn't have yeah. to go to see if it fits in or anything, that he lays yeah. them out. And he just whatever piece he grabs. Marbling. Yeah, I remember yeah. marveling watching him put do a puzzle before. Yeah, yeah. yeah we were joking back them times. Like, How can we make money off this guy with his puzzles? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, nonetheless, let's get back to the focus here. So we have the latter rains or the second rains comes in the beginning of the year, six months dry. Then the early rains come at the end of the year. So spring, summer, autumn, winter, seed time. And then during a regular year, 364 day year, there's 91 days here, not 98. Sorry for that mistake, but still, it keeps every, it still doesn't really mess up anything here. And it's good to note when it says winter is seed time, because that's when you're going to plant your seeds, right? And the harvest is when at you're the reaping. beginning of spring, was when you're reaping. Right. And we know that. In February, um, usually after Passover, at the waving of the sheaf, is the beginning of the barley harvest. That's right. And it is in February, too. People try to hide it, but you can prove that. There's charts for February. And I always talk about this this um, this website called the Bib of God. And they have people over there who live there who are into calendars. And they love to chart everything. Except they don't believe what we believe, of course. But they know what we believe but they speak against it greatly but you know i've used their a lot of their information to see is barley really over there ready um in, in february and in late february yes it is not the beginning of february but late february where it's supposed to come you get the first cuttings of the barley harvest and that's then right. it starts to increase up until pentecost that's right so even though the scriptures mention summer and winter and you don't see the words fall or spring but you can see the evidence of fall or spring in the words harvest and seed time. That's right, D. So again, just another chart. Just kind of looking at it another way with the information. You know how we color code things now. You get an understanding, the latter rains, the festivals that are in these times, the spring harvest, the latter rains, the latter part of winter. We have early summer, then we call it also late summer or autumn. And in in autumn or late summer, we have trumpets, atonement, tabernacles, and the eight day festivals. And then we have as well um, early rains, the early part of winter, the beginning of it. And yeah, all of that information here on a chart. And a lot of these charts are within um, are within our our lessons as well. And also for the Jubilee download calendar, you can also get it there as well. And uh, maybe we'll give that link later on. So just an understanding of a bib, zif, savannah, three months. And then once the latter rains are over, we come into summer, right? And here we are. And for the next three months is the beginning of summer. The middle of summer is going to be June, right? The solstice. And this is the latter half of the year. 
latter summer and then we have again the early rains coming after summer or the beginning of winter as you can see all the numbers and dates here are what they are they nothing nothing moves so for example when we say nothing moves you'll see like the 10th day right here of Ethanem is the day of atonement you notice that it starts it's on a monday or begins sunday evening mm -hmm. that'll always be on that Sunday evening in the Monday, the, the 10th day of Ethanim doesn't wander around. It won't be like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or another day, like lunar solar calendars are, or well, basically I'll just say all those lunar solar calendars, how they operate. They're always moving around. The atonement, Passover could come on any day of the week, but with just scriptural set al almanac or calendar, these things are fixed. And they don't wander from the days of the week nor the dates within the months. That's right. So let's finish off with some things about summer and winter in the land of Israel. Again, we have the hot, dry season, also called summer. We have the cold, rainy season, also called winter. Scripture. Genesis 8, verse 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Psalm 74, verse 17. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter. Zechariah 14, verse 8. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Yeah, so I just brought out these verses here, just again showing you that in the scriptures it mentions summer and winter together a few times. Mm -hmm. I think maybe about 24 times you'll get summer mentioned and winter around the same. But I just wanted to bring out these verses again, showing that even in the new kingdom, the living waters that's in the new kingdom, again, the seasons will still be intact. So the scriptures mention summer and winter, but like David said, using wisdom, you can know seed time and harvest are dealing with spring and autumn. But for the most part, those are six-month seasons, so they have, they have the, the preeminence that way. That's right. Go ahead, D. You, this is the weather in Jerusalem season by season from another website from Jerusalem. So go ahead. The weather in Jerusalem is usually very predictable. There are two distinct seasons in the center of Israel, winter and summer. In between, we're graced with a few delightful weeks of spring. Fall doesn't really happen much around here. We seem to segue or segue from summer right into winter weather that just gets progressively colder through to February. That's right. So there's two seasons basically when you go to Israel that you know you can see clearly. The hot, dry summer, no rain, and then the rainy season. It's rainy and cold. So let me give another video here. This this is really short. This video, this is an introduction um, to, so this is summer, a yeah, short intro. If you are planning on coming to Israel in summer, which is when most people visit Israel, this video is going to be very helpful. Summer in Israel starts in May and ends in October. You can expect temperature of over 30 degrees Celsius, around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and zero rain. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Wow, Wait. he was very, very straight, very direct. Summer begins in May to October. That's right. That's right. And no rain. Mm -hmm. No rain at all. I wanted to read um, this little thing here as well. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. This is um, Jerusalem weather. Jerusalem enjoys long, warm, dry summers from May through to September and cool winters November to March. Now, they've only mentioned 10 months there, but watch. Often the seasons change rapidly from very cold to very hot, but you can normally experience the pleasant season of spring for a brief period of time around the month of April and the mild season of fall during October. So there they kind of squeeze it in. Mm -hmm. At 809 meters above sea level and very much within the Judean desert hills, Jerusalem is generally cooler and less humid than Tel Aviv. 
Summer months are generally without rainfall with average daily temperatures between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius, which is 70 to 90 Fahrenheit, although temperatures rise somewhat in the scorching months of July and August. During peak sunshine hours in the hottest months or during a heat wave, you'll want to remain indoors in an air-conditioned environment. When outdoors, precautions should be taken against sunburn and sunstroke, namely wearing, okay, that's that. Um, with regard to rain, you'll know when it won't rain, but not when it will. The rainy season is during the intermediate and winter months from around October to April. Mm -hmm. Winter can be extremely cool and wet with rain, the occasional snowstorm and temperatures sometimes down to freezing. However, even during the winter, many days have some sunshine. All right. So with that okay. said, go ahead, D. I'm just saying um, the last part that was mentioned there about the rainy season being from October to April. Mm -hmm. Again, that's just covering the, the rainy season, which is the winter season. That's right. Six months, which is true. That's right. So again, this is how the year would look normally. The latter rains, summer, early rains. Now remember, Jerusalem is in the middle of the earth and it's a, it's a subtropical and tropical area. The tropical and subtropical regions see little annual fluctuation of sunlight. However, the dry season, look what they say, from May to October, is called summer and the rainy season, November to April, is called winter, even though it's located in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm. So they know these things, right? This is something that's known. Clearly. Let's get the winter or rainy seasons in, in, in Israel for a quick sec. We've got 12 minutes, good time. So basically you're gonna see that Jazz Israel, Jazz land, is governed by the, the rainy seasons and the summer season. That's what really governs it. And this is going to help to let us know when the beginning of the year is. Because if we know when summer starts, that dry season, like May, then we're going to also know when the rainy season ends, which is the end of April. And then if it's the end of April, we're going to know that these are in three-month chunks. So if summer, if May has no um, rain in it we know that that that's summer and it could not be a part of the second or third month because the first second and third months are rainy months yes but, that's your point right give us a read here deuteronomy 11 verse 11 but the land whether ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven a land which jadael careth for the eyes of Jadael are always upon it always. from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. So this is why we kind of, we use when we're dealing with Jaz Almanac, it's true wherever you are in the earth, but it's perfectly compatible with the scripture and the land of Israel to the That's T. Right. And rightly so. I mean, this verse lets you know why it goes that way. His eyes are upon that, right? That land. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass. If ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love Jair El and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. So we have the first rain, which is the early rain and the latter rain. And notice it says they're in their due, their appointed season. That's right. Go ahead, Dean. Winter in Israel. Weather in Jerusalem in the winter is a bit less predictable than in the summer. The wet season starts in November and goes through April. I was going to show a video for that, but I won't show the video now because I want to focus more on summer. But it's going to say that same thing that, yeah. you know, the rainy season starts from November to April. Well, true statement. Mm -hmm. From the Smith's Bible Dictionary. Um, on page 23, under the heading of agriculture, the period denoting by the common scriptural expressions of the early and the latter rain, generally reaching from November to April, constituted by rainy season, and the remainder of the year, the dry season. That's right. So again, we're just getting some resources. 
Notice here in the, with the scripture now that the winter rainy season starts at the end of the ninth month, which would be, again, October. That's right. In the scriptures, it's called the month of Kislu. That's right. Ezra 10, verse 9. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. And it was the ninth month on the twelfth on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of El, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. Wow. So one thing we know, remember, it doesn't rain in Jerusalem or Israel during that six month period. So we're in the ninth month right here, and we're at the end of that summer season, basically, where mm -hmm. you could consider this, if it was like to talk Gregorian wise, it would be like uh, in October on the 20th day of the month, so to speak, right? Yes. Just to give an understanding, not exactly, but to give that understanding. It's a time of great rain. And so this is this also ninth month is getting into the beginning of winter. Verse 13. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand outside, neither is this work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. That's right. So they can't deal with this outside at all because it's a it's a rainy period. It, what does it say? It's a time of what? Much rain. That's right. It's the rainy season. And look when it's starting right. again, the ninth month, the 20th day of the month, just That's 10 right. days before the 10th month, right? That's right. So right at the end of that six-month of the a dry or summer season is when the rains begin to fall during That's that right. last week of the That's ninth right. month. Jeremiah 6, verse 22. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. So again, when we read this word winter in the scriptures, I want you to know that it's, it's associated with the rains. Sometimes when you hear winter, you just think, oh, it's only snow and ice. But no, yeah. winter really means the rainy season in winter. It can That's snow, right. of course. Snow is pre precipitation, same way, right? And it's cold and everything. But just letting you know that, you know, he's going into his winter cottage, so to speak. And it's the ninth month. So it's getting, it's that time where summer's over and it's getting cold. That's right. We have to remember the Jaws calendar is oriented around the land of Israel. It's easy to say, think winter house and think snow and ice and cold because we live in the northern hemisphere and but um, that's not necessarily true. That's right. So again, here's a try. This going. It said that it was a, it was the ninth month, right? Mm -hmm. And it was what the twentieth day of the month. Yes. So right around here, which is you can see about ten to eleven days before winter starts. But this is when the rains start to trickle down, and this is now the full three month rainy season. Even beginning from there, but this is again clockwork. It's accurate in its cycle. The tenth month, which is Tibet, is the official beginning of winter for the three month, for that first early winter or early rains for the first three month season. Now we got that was the that was the early rains. Now look at the latter rains when they start. Joel two verse twenty three. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Jair El, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So that former rain is the early rain of three months, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have this, what, the latter rains, when does it begin? In the first month. So let's use our wisdom, right? So if the latter rains, if we know, we know that the, the rainy season is six months each, right, family? So the early rains are three months first. They start from November. You can say last of October, but let's go November to uh, the end of January. So November, all of December, all of January. And then you would have the first uh, the first month, which we say is February. Uh, the beginning of the year, we have February, March, and April. And at the end of April, April showers bring May flowers, May flowers. right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is that in order for the scriptural calendar to be compatible with Israel, this has to match up. You would have to have that the first month of any calendar out there would have to be the beginning of the latter rains because it says it right there. And so we're understanding also that the, the early rains beginning near the end of the ninth month, officially the 10th, call it that way, although it's only 10 days before, that would be that three months of the early rains. So 
let's take a look at something else as we move on. This is going to expose like a lot of other calendars because how could you have, even to say, how could you have a calendar that says you, you begin in March, March 20th or any time in March, you have March, April, April. and May. May. And, and that May would be the last month of the latter rains, but May has no rain though. Exactly. You're only covering two months, March and April, right? Because the rains start from November and go all the way to the end of April, which is six months. May, summer, all the way to the end of October, which is six months. That's right. So it's impossible for the first month of Jaws calendar to be in March mm -hmm. and to coincide with the, with the rainy season. It doesn't work. Nope. So we take again a look at the early and latter rains. This is the early rains. Tibet, Sabat, or and Adar, months 10, 11, 12. And then we have the latter rains beginning in the first month. Abib is February, March, and April. Remember, there's going to be no rain in May. None. Zero. That's that's the common understanding, which is very true. So you just see here now the six-month rainy season, but letting you know that at the end of if, if the waters, the latter rains begin in the first month, you couldn't have the March being the first month because it would have to be three months of latter rains. You'd have March, April, and then like we said, you'd have to go into May, but May is summer. You understand? And then you'd be pushing things along. The rainy season begins in November. That's it. So we have this annual precipitation is around 550 milliliters, 21.5 inches concentrated in the cold half of the year while it almost never rains from May to mid-October. This is for Jerusalem, by the way, mm -hmm. Jerusalem averages. So we look at that, never rains from May to mid-October. You see the mid-October again, remember the 20th, yes. Yes. right, uh, uh, of the ninth month? Mm -hmm. Again, that's everything's falling into play. So when we look at this chart here, we see you know, from May to October is our summer season. And then we have winter beginning from November, December, January, February, March, and April. Six months. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, if the year began in March, if you had your April, your latter rains beginning in March, and we know it's the, the latter rains are three months long. They're not two months long. You have March, you have April, and you have May. And look at that. 0.1 of an inch. That's like maybe two millimeters. Means like maybe it rain, rained for 15, 10 minutes, but you get practically nothing for the next six months. And then near the end of October, you get, you start, the rain starts to pick up again before you can see when November starts, it's going through. Yeah. And imagine th this, this has been continually in motion as long as they've been keeping records. It's been, it's been like this in the land of Israel for. <clears throat> Very long time, you know. Right. We don't see the type of consistency over here in, in in the northern hemisphere, and we see rain in the summer times, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't. That's right. That's right. You can just start from. You don't have to read the other part. Just from in Palestine. Mm. In Palestine, the rainy season extends from October to April. The dry season from May to October. The early rain occurs in October and November until February. The latter rain in February until April. Crops are therefore planted so that they will grow during the rainy season. That's right. They're that getting all sense. that moisture and then they're going to be ready for spring. That's right. So that planting is, is, is seed time. That's right. And let me finish up with two more slides, family. Go ahead, Dia. I like this one a lot. Mm. Rain is associated with the winter season. Song of Solomon 2, verse 11. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. So, is the winter and rain the same thing? Yes. That's right. See, this is the scriptural, this is what you call the scriptural April showers verse, kind of thing. April showers bring May flowers. Because it says, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. So, that means this is the end of basically April or the third month, Savan, right? And then what comes after that? Verse 12, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of birds has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land, the That's land right. of Israel. So winter 
and rain season, they're the same thing. Six months long, there, it's a rainy, early rains, latter rains, hope you're getting that. And then the summer is also a time of drought, no rain, as it says here in the scripture. Psalms 32, verse 4. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Mm -hmm. Summer is a time of drought, right? That's right. Dryness, no rain. No rain. So there's no rain in the land of Israel, right, in summertime. You can read this a little bit here. We're almost done, family. Just maybe a couple more. I just want to make sure I might go to five after seven. Go ahead. Summer. Summer here runs from May to September. The one sure thing about this time of year, it will not rain. Now, when they said September, because they know, remember, October, in late October, you're going to get that little bit of rain. But for sure, in, from these these first five months, none. And you don't even have to read um, the rest part. You know, it just tells you without rain or storms will be in your way when you're there during this time of visitation. Right. So let's look at some charts from Jerusalem and Israel. So we hear summer. We have April here, right? This is the, the rainfall. You can see coming down to nothing. And then again, starting on October, getting into the rainy season. But the summer season from May to October is our dry season. And then from November through to April is the rainy season on this chart. Here's also the amount of daylight hours. The most amount of daylight hours are found between May and October, of course, because that's where you have your longest days and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. So again, the daylight hours work perfectly. This is just the summer season. Again, early summer, where we're starting right here. We're going to go through six months until near October. And also the Feast of Dedication is around the 25th of Kislu. That during that time there, again, this is that time of the unofficial start of the, the latter rains. Mm -hmm. June is midsummer. September is mid-autumn, where you're going to get your solstice and your equinox. Again, yeah, this is the climate in Israel month by month. I'm putting all this information. And I'm just going to read April and May. That's all I want to read here, really. And not even all of it. You can just read the beginning. Go ahead, D. April is sunny in Israel with at least nine hours of daily sunshine and clear skies for 85% of the time. The precipitation registers below 25.4 millimeters or one inch even in the sweatest regions of the north and west. All right, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. This is during the East Valley. Now notice what it says about May. Weather in May. May is dry and sunny in Israel with 11 hours of bright sunshine and 14 hours of daylight. The temperatures register in the hot range of 18.9 degrees Celsius to 32.8 degrees Celsius in the east and 22.2 .2 degrees Celsius to 36.1 degrees Celsius in the south. All right. You don't have to read the whole thing here. Um, the Bible, what does the bottom say? Expect the temperatures to rise significantly by the end of the spring season in May in Israel. You see that? The end of the spring season is what? In May. May. All right. So, yeah. I mean, look at that information that we have here. Right? So, here's Jaws official. This is all the, the official chart that I have made for these for this this not for this lesson but for Israel and Jaz Almanac. So we have the season, we have the latter rains, 89 days or the grain harvest in the blue, the summer fruits harvest season of six months, no rain for 184 days. Then we have the early rains, which is the seed time and sowing, and again 91 days or three months of the early rains, both the rainy seasons give you the six month rainy season or the winter time mm -hmm. so when we look at the month and the days again from a bib to a dar you can see that judah may is the beginning of summer kislo october is the, the ending of the summer season winter begins in the 10th month or tibet or equivalent to november we got our temperatures as you can see them in degrees celsius or fahrenheit you can see the increasing of the temperatures during the summer season 
And as we get to the colder seasons, the temperatures are lower. Even the hours of daylight when we're talking about solar, the solar seasons, you know, look at the amount of daylight, 11, 12, or 13, that, that'd be um, 10, 20, so that's 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. We have 13, 14, and 14. So we have 10, 10, 10, 4, 4 is 8, or oh, that's 41. So you see the greater amount of daylight is in this period here. That's right. Right? 13, 14, and 14. This is 13, 12, and 11. And then you have 11, 10, and 10. This is the amount of hours the sun is out shining. And as I said, in, in um, May and June, you get the, up to 14 hours. You got your rainy uh, rain calculated in millimeters or inches, right? Savannah, you got um, maybe 30 millimeters or one inch. And then in May, it starts to drop down. It's two, uh, 30, uh, 2.5 millimeters. Like I say, it couldn't have rained longer than 10 minutes. You know, yes. and, very, and very lightly at that. <laughs> and then we go through no rain, no rain. And then we see rain increasing near the end of October again bringing us into our winter season once more. Yes. And finally, we have days of rain, 12, 12, 9, 2. This is on average. And remember, these two days are not two full days. It just means it might have rained two times, right? Going to, So it goes from 2 to 2, giving us our summer season. And we've got our rainy season right there again, D. Yes, excellent chart. Yeah, this is a perfect chart complete perfection of the seasons, the beginning of the year, the amount of days, the temperature, daylight. It's, it's full and complete. Praise Jah. Praise Jah. And just let me put in this part here. We got the, remember, the mid-spring equinox in March, summer solstice in June, September equinox, and the winter solstice in December. All of them are the middle of Jah's true seasons. Jah's seasons are scriptural and they're solar. Yeah, I think that's it. That's all there is. He's got more charts showing the same thing. Annual precipitation is around 550. Well, from May to mid-October, it never rains. Again, another chart showing this. On average, January is the coldest month. And July and August are the hottest months in Israel. Summers are hot and very humid along the Mediterranean coast, but dry in central highlands. Most of the average rainfall is in Israel falls between November and April. May through September are usually rainless. And during a heat wave in 2006, October and November were also dry, and November was also almost rainless when it was supposed to be rainy. So freak weather also occurs, right? Mm-hmm. So again, these are all the charts. This is for the many different cities in Israel. Tel Aviv, Bayit Dagon, Jerusalem. They're all showing the same thing, the summer season and the rainy season. It doesn't matter where, it's all the same. Haifa, Safed, Beersheba. You're seeing a repeat. Couldn't get a greater understanding. This is it. That's it. All praise right. to the Most High, Jah. And Jehoshua for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding for his almanac and all the beautiful things that go along with it. Praise Jah. Wow. That's a lot of inf information, but we covered it. Now you know about summer and the winter rainy seasons. Now, even this video, you can tell other people to watch it. If they say when the year begins, why not February? Why is it February and all this? And this is just one video again on that where we probably have about five more videos showing different aspects of why we begin the seasons when we do and the months when we do. All glory to John Jehoshua, our Savior. And I want to say thank you to all for watching and tuning in and to those in the future who are watching. Be diligent, right, in your, in your studies. If there's any comments or questions, you could put them in. Brother David, always a great work. Yes, yes. Oh, I think it uh, looked like Billy had a question earlier. We, I don't think we've seen. Okay, so what's your take on 13 cycles of 19 years? We said it back to the first day of creation, starting on Sunday every two. <laughs> no, well, we don't. You know, I have a lesson called, I forgot what it's called, but 
it exposes that anything dealing with the calendar, if it's not 12, 7, or 28 multiples of sevens, there's a, an error. 19 years, no way. That's dealing with the 19-year lunar Metonic cycle, right? That deals with the lunar phases. And the 13 cycles are dealing with, you know, because every, every three years, you have to put in a 13th month in the Hebrew calendar. And there's only supposed to be 12. And mm -hmm. so they put this in 13 months. And then when you do this mathematical count, I don't know if it's 13 times 19 gives you 257, but a lot of things can work out, but it has nothing at all to do with the scriptural seasons. That's just a lunar cycle understanding for the agricultural seasons. But we don't do anything holy, doesn't deal with 13, it's 12, and definitely not 19. So, yes, that's that understanding building. Mm hmm. And we know of it, the metonic cycle, but it does have no play, as you can see in the scripture almanac that we profess. John says, yes, bless up. Thank you, Brother John. Thank you, Sister Carice. Glory to the Most High. Sister Andrea, praise John Jehoshua. Thank you, Sister. Have a good week, you too, John. Yes, yes, have a good week. Uh, 247, yeah, no problem with the numbers. Let me see, what is it, 19 times 13? Yeah, 247, 19 times 13 is 247, that's right. Oh, no problem. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Auntie Alma, well tight, everyone. Zion Assembly of Jah, one love. Again, if there's any other questions or comments, you could put it in. Otherwise, we've come to another end. And All right. Have, have a happy summer. The weather will be getting nicer. You know, remember, seasons don't change like suddenly. You're going to get probably the days a little bit warmer and the, the nights, as they've been cool, the nights are going to start to warm up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very soon, too. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, once again, good work, Brother Sean. Yes, Brother D. If thanks to everyone. Good Have a good mm -hmm. week. And um, taking this, this lesson and these things because... These things are true and can't be gainsaid. That's right. And when we say can't be gainsaid, people have to bring proper information to say what you're saying is wrong and this is what is right. Because that's what we, we usually do. We point out, and sometimes I get dogged on it because I spend too much time pointing out what is wrong. And some people just want to say, just tell us the calendar. Tell us what it is. Mm -hmm. But if I just do end up doing that, what happens is then I get... The 50 million questions. Well, what about the moon here? What about the words new moon in the Bible? What about this and that? The words new moon shouldn't even be in the scripture. It should be new month, but that's for another lesson. But yes, yeah, that's that. All right. That's that. All right, everyone. Thank you again. All glory to the Father and Son. D, look a bit. Yes. Have a good week, everyone. Give praise to John, his son, Joshua. Praise John. Easy, Sean. Easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to where I wanted to get to. That's good. Okay. Yes. Give thanks, everyone. All right, bless up. Take care and shalom.